will begin like any other day. Routine. Most of us will be on our way to work. The younger generation on their way to school. At home, the lady of the house will be engaged in her morning chores, as usual. Yes, it will be just another routine, peaceful weekday morning. And then... At first, people will stop in their tracks. Some will be puzzled. Some annoyed. Some even angry. No announcement was made of a practice air raid alert. It must be a mistake. Someone at civil defense must have pushed the wrong button. But what if it isn't a mistake? What if someone at civil defense pushed the right button? And this is not a practice alert, but warning of a real enemy attack. And if it is a real attack, how will the United States cope with it? The answer begins thousands of miles to the north, at the dew line, the distant early warning system, a network of radars which stretches some 5,000 miles. From the westward tip of the Aleutian Islands, to Alaska, across the continent's northern rim, to Greenland and Iceland. Here, high-powered radars probing deep into the skies would be the first to detect unknown aircraft flying above the roof of the world hundreds of miles away, over the ice-locked void of the polar region. On detection, the information would be flashed to the Combat Operations Center of NORAD, the North American Air Defense Command, buried deep in the heart of Cheyenne Mountain near Colorado Springs. NORAD's mission is to defend Canada and the United States against aerospace attack. would also be relayed to SPAC, the Strategic Air Command, and to all SAGE, semi-automatic ground environment centers located in the United States and Canada. Each SAGE center will conduct the defense of the sector for which it is responsible. As the unknown force moves south toward the North American continent, it will be kept under constant radar surveillance. Each change of position, altitude, and speed will be known instantly in NORAD's Combat Operations Center. When the unknowns enter the NORAD area of responsibility, the Commander-in-Chief, NORAD, will declare an air defense emergency, and United States and Canadian long-range fighter interceptors will be launched first to identify the aircraft, and, if found hostile, to destroy them. With the unknowns confirmed hostile, our interceptors will attack.
Meanwhile, by order of the Commander-in-Chief, NORAD, an alert air raid warning will be instituted. Now the whole North American Air Defense Command will prepare for a war many of us believe could never happen, prayed would never happen. Sir, your conference call is ready. What do you mind, please? The White House. By order from the White House, you are authorized with to With the decision made, the United States will now strike back with a counteroffensive unparalleled in the history of war. Airborne bombers of Strategic Air Command will be ordered to take full reprisal against the enemy's homeland. Others will roar off to the attack from SAC bases located around the world. Giant Air Force intercontinental ballistic missiles carrying nuclear warheads will thunder into the sky toward their pre-assigned targets thousands of miles away. While from the depths of the deep, submarines will launch nuclear-tipped Polaris missiles. Despite the devastating destruction, our fighter interceptors will inflict upon the invaders, some may get through. At this time, the battle staffs of all stage centers located in the sectors toward which the remaining enemy planes are moving will prepare to carry out prearranged contingency plans. Stage surveillance teams will pick up the hostile force. The information will be fed into the digital computers. Using all available data, the computers will offer a choice of weapons which will best intercept and destroy the enemy. If a senior director decides to employ Beaumont missiles as the first weapon of intercept, Beaumont will erupt from widely dispersed bases. Before the deadly Beaumarts hit their targets, more supersonic interceptors will be scrambled. defense will be launched from all directions to destroy the enemy as far from their targets as possible. not destroyed by our fighter interceptors will probably deploy toward their assigned objectives, which could be Washington, D.C., Seattle, New York, Detroit, Los Angeles, or other large, heavily populated and industrial cities in the United States. Cities under the protection of the U.S. Army's Nike Hercules Defense Systems, the inner ring defense of the continental United States. Acquisition radars of Nike Hercules batteries protecting the objective areas will pick up the enemy bombers. Inside the vans, trained eyes will study the radar scopes. As each bomber comes within maximum range of the deadly nuclear-capable weapons, its doom will be sealed. just witnessed was, of course, simulated. But the conduct of the defense was factual. I'm Darren McGavin. If North America is ever attacked by a hostile force with manned bombers, 
it would, as you have just seen, be subjected to a continuous, intensively devastating attack from as far out as possible with every type of lethal weapon in our air defense arsenal. To say nothing of the terrible destruction our own bombers and ballistic missiles would inflict on the enemy's homeland. And for those bombers which survive and penetrate our outer defenses, the ultimate responsibility for their destruction would rest with a RADCOM, the United States Army Air Defense Command. A RADCOM is both a major combat command of the Army and a vitally component part of NORAD's defense in depth. Its mission is to provide combat-ready forces for the air defense of critical areas within the continental United States. On duty 24 hours a day, more than 20,000 men of the Army Air Defense Command, one-third of them National Guardsmen, stand ready to defend more than 100 metropolitan cities and industrial complexes. The responsibility is great, the training arduous. An Aradcom missileman begins his career at the Army Air Defense Center in Fort Bliss, Texas. Here, students come to master their own particular jobs in the Army's air defense system. At first, they learn that Nike Hercules is a guided missile guided by commands from a ground control center consisting of detection and guidance elements. Radar eyes connected by electronic brains that control the sharp wing nuclear capable weapons which can destroy any known aircraft or air supported missile. Training at the Army Air Defense Center is conducted not only for enlisted men, but for officers as well. Each officer must know precisely how the entire system works, how it locates the enemy, how it fires a missile, and how it guides the missile to the target. Enlisted men who are trained as guidance specialists are taught to fix in their minds a clear picture of how invisible electronic impulses guide the missile. They are taught to use the radar eyes, which can see and probe great distances into space, searching for hostile intruders. Other men, trained as launcher specialists, must know how to keep the missiles operational, ready to fire at all times. The great day finally arrives, the day for which the men have been studying and training, graduation, and assignments to Nike Hercules batteries protecting such great cities as New York, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and San Francisco, where the men will undergo months of intensive unit training. A Nike Hercules battery is emplaced in two different areas. This is the battery control area. It contains the electronic equipment which detects, tracks, and guides the missile to destroy a target. Separated by one to three miles, is the launching area. Here are located the facilities and equipment to assemble, store, check out, and launch the missiles. The combat capability of RADCOM units is determined by certain indicators, such as operational readiness, engagement simulator training, and defense combat evaluations.
safety is stressed throughout the training. To prevent accidental firing, red flags are attached to parts which make the missile unable to fire. flags removed, additional precautionary measures are taken. Special keys are required to unlock the missile's deadly power. But training to fire Nike Hercules is one thing. Firing the lethal weapon is something else. That's why each year units from Nike Hercules batteries all over the world are sent to McGregor Range in New Mexico to conduct short notice annual practice called SNAP, a live firing exercise to test their proficiency and accuracy in target kill. Battle stations, blue status. Acquisition present. Computer present. PTR present. MTR present. Blue status received in the launching area. Launching platoon present. On deck. Now the men are ready to engage the mock enemy, a remotely controlled target. Search. The searching radar scans the sky for the invisible target. Challenge target. Is it friend? No AFF. Target full. Designate. The eye of the tracking radar swings to the target. It will now follow its every movement. Soon, all will be automatic. automatic. Launcher number one, ready. Stand clear, launcher number one. This is how it will be near our great cities and with the army overseas if on some fatal day enemy bombers attack. minute detail is complete, will the safety keys release the ready missile to the radar, waiting to guide it in its flight. Now there is just time enough for the final finger exercises. When the warning lights switch to green, the missile will be ready to fire. Launching control group, ready for action. Acquisition ready for red status. Computer ready for red status. APR ready for red status. MTR ready for red status. Red status. Section 8 selected. The missile radar turns toward the launching area and locks on the missile the electronic beam which will guide it in its flight. Site 2-3, request clearance to fire. Surveillance, this is the range safety officer. Is the range radar clear? Site 2-3, you have final clearance to fire. In a moment, the missile, 
armed only with explosives, will perform a role which can also speak with the awesome voice of nuclear power. About to fire. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. seconds to intercept. Thirty seconds to intercept. Twenty seconds to intercept. Two, three, firing successful. Until now, you have seen the vast defense network the United States possesses to guard North America against attack by man bombers. And we shall continue to guard against that threat 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. But we face an even more terrible threat. The intercontinental ballistic missile and the submarine-launched ballistic missile. As of today, the United States has no operational defense against incoming ballistic missiles. However, there is a system under advanced development by the Army which is capable of destroying them. It is known as Nike X. Basically, this is Nike X. consists of two radars capable of performing multiple radar functions and two types of guided missiles. Plus high-speed digital computers and automatic electronic command and control systems. The nerve center of Nike X is MAR, which stands for Multi-Function Array Radar. MAR can do the job of four radars, detect, track, discriminate, and guide interceptor missiles to the kill. It can scan and rescan the whole arc of the sky within the fraction of a second, and with the aid of computers, make microsecond decisions. Backing up MAR is an MSR, missile sight radar. Actually, a number of MSRs might encircle a city. Largely under orders from MAR, they would launch defensive missiles from underground silos and guide them on an intercept course with enemy ballistic missiles. If necessary, MSR can operate independently. A third radar, now under development, will increase the system's range capability considerably. This is Zeus. It is designed to blast enemy nuclear warheads above the fringe of the atmosphere, hundreds of miles up and hundreds of miles away from our cities. Backing up Zeus, is Sprint, a tactical missile which explodes from its silo like a bullet from a gun, reaching a velocity of more than five times the speed of sound. Here is a classic example of how Nike X could operate if an aggressor launched a ballistic missile attack against the United States. Traveling at about 18,000 miles an hour, each warhead might be camouflaged by miles and miles of decoys, hurtling ahead with and behind the real warheads. While still thousands of miles away, the missiles would be detected by BMUs, the Ballistic Missile Early Warning System. Instantly, BMUs would flash the warning to NORAD and to MAR, indicating the speed, direction, and number of attacking missiles. MAR would then detect, track, and identify the real warheads from the decoys in microseconds. At the proper moment, Zeus would be blasted from its silo. Working together with MAR, MSR, the missile sight radar, 
would guide Zeus to its target to destroy the warheads before they could enter the Earth's atmosphere. If, in the course of the attack, another warhead might reach the edge of the Earth's atmosphere at a range too close for Zeus to be effective, Sprint would be rammed into the air. Again, working with Mar, MSR would guide Sprint to intercept the warhead while it was still many miles in space. When and if Nike X is approved for production, the Army Air Defense Command will be sole user of the system in the continental United States. Meanwhile, Nike Hercules is ready for high altitude enemy bombers. Hawk is ready for low altitude targets. And as for the men of a RADCOM, the United States Army Air Defense Command, they are ready for anything. About to fire. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Thank <laughs> you.